Welcome back to another great panel. This is the Game 5 panel, of course, ho hosted by myself and uh, David and I believe PG or no, PG is the guest. So we've also, we, so we've got Clifford Cannon, the CEO of Alchemon as a guest. We've got Parker Bryant, the co-founder of Fractal Monsters. We've got PG, the head of Algorand, uh, head of Algorand Gaming. And who else do we have on the panel? I only had, let's see, I only had three members. Sorry if I'm missing somebody off my names, but welcome everybody to the panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, it looks like we have Aaron and Dean from the Algo Gaming Guild. Okay, yeah, sorry, thanks. that's what it was. It was <laughs> yeah. it's a little small on the screen right here, so I was like, it's it's not on my paper here, so my apologies there. But <laughs> no, it's fine. We we'll remember, uh... we'll remember that. We remember that. Blame blame somebody else. This is a, I didn't I didn't print this out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, welcome everybody. It's really great to have uh, another fantastic panel, and I'm really excited to have this conversation. Excited to be here. You yeah. want to take it away with some questions, David? Yeah, for sure. So uh, let's kick it off maybe uh, and just start maybe high level, um, you know, and just looking back on 2022 and gaming, uh, Algorand Gaming, uh, you know, maybe you guys can talk about some of the highlights uh, and, and kind of just where we've come uh, for uh, gaming on the blockchain. Uh, and then we can kind of get into more specific stuff after that. Yeah, I can get started. Um, we launched our version one uh, this last year and uh, it's on PC and uh, Mac. And uh, we have a working game that's live. Um, and yeah, we're working to push towards mobile at this time. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun over the last year. We definitely have had, uh, you know, a lot of sales, a lot of active players and things like that. And our intention this year is just to open up a lot more who can actually play the game, you know, going with mobile and also bringing a lot more different functions and things like that to entertain. Yeah. I think for, I think for us, I was just going to say, sorry, Parker. Um, so for us, like even not even talking about like the way our 2022 was, but because we're like follow the games on a consistent basis and release like a weekly newsletter with everything that's going on, just the number of games that have popped up, the development that's happened in all those games and how like the communities come together has been incredible. Like honestly, we obviously think 2023 will be even better, but the amount of development in that short period of time in the space has been um, super fun to watch. I agree. I was going to say, I bet Aaron and Dean have a really good perspective on this because they, they see everything. So um, I'm a little head down focused on Fractal, so it's hard to keep track of everything. But I know Alkimon's putting out good stuff, so I'm excited to see that. Mobile is a tough push, so um, we, we want to push there eventually as well. So go ahead and pave that path. I like that. <laughs> um, but just us specifically, we're, we're getting close to mainnet launch and... Uh, We've been building, we've got the game in a really good spot. We got the website in a good spot and we're really excited to just go live. Yeah, I just can close this. I think 2022 was more like, you know, I guess definitely Archimon paved the way, but overall it was definitely a lot of like preparation and building. I think 2023 is gonna be very, very exciting uh, for games overall, you know, web free games, uh, definitely on Algorand, a lot of great projects launching. So I'm personally very excited. I hope everybody else here is. Definitely the panelists are. I hope uh, people in the audience are excited as well. Fantastic, fantastic. So <clears throat> this next question is a community question and it's sort of the elephant in the room when we talk about NFT gaming. Uh, so this one's for everybody, but let's start off with uh, Parker and get his his opinion, and then we'll go around from there. Uh, so given how most of the, you know, let's call them Gen 1 blockchain gaming projects with play-to-earn tokenomics failed to deliver, uh, you know, good on long-term games, uh, you know, do you think there's an issue with, uh, you know, issuing a token for these games? Do you think it's still a good idea? And, you know, where did some of these uh, prior iterations of blockchain gaming go wrong with some of their models? Yeah. That's a tough question to answer. Um, <laughs> it's a loaded one. <laughs> it is a little bit of a loaded question. For us specifically, we didn't want to go the tokenomic route because we're a US-based company. And as everybody probably knows, that gets a little sticky. Um, but I don't think it is the, the wrong answer. I think maybe uh, more thought needs to be put into it. Um, definitely, sometimes tokenomics can come before thinking about the game, which is also an important part. Um, you, you got to have a good game first and then you can work on the tokenomics. But for us specifically, we, we wanted to do it more of like a community token style, similar to how Mingo does shrimp and Flemish does carrot and things of that nature. So that's, that's where the route we're going to go. But I do think it is a totally viable option to go the token route. I just think you have to have really solid planning and like long-term, long-term plans. Fantastic. Do you have an opinion there, uh, Clifford? 
Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, getting into Web3, the dream that I envisioned is that everyone owns everything that they have, you know, swapped for, traded for. And that's really what we wanted to see with Alchemon. We have like moves that you own, their NFTs in your wallet. And we want every aspect of everything we do completely under the full control of the users of our project. Um, you know, there are definitely with the play to earn model, which really is just, you know, it's a marketing gimmick really, but what we want is for everyone to own what they have and to do whatever they want with it. You know, we love the idea that just every aspect is completely theirs. I mean, obviously we are the centralized group built the game and things like that, and we intend to keep building, but the problem comes in is that the game needs to be a game, which means it needs to be entertaining. It needs to be fun. It can't just be, um, it can't just be people wanting to earn money because then people aren't in it for the right reason. So you do sign yourself up for a nice, uh, tightrope walk with that, which, you know, isn't the most enjoyable, but you know, it is hard work and things like that. But, um, you know, we do believe in the model of just like everything we have, it's owned by the user and they use it in our game. Fantastic. Again, let's move on over to Aaron and Dean. Do you have uh, anything to add to this discussion? Yeah. So I think like, obviously we've seen that a lot of like the token models haven't been super sustainable. Um, right. Look at like Axie as an example, but I think the problem with it is it sort of distracts you away from your actual game development and focusing on what's important because if you have game days, you're not going to be experienced the tokenomics and how to do it right. Um, so it's obviously because it distracts away from that, it's not the best model, but that's not to say it isn't a viable model in the future if someone sort of got it right in a sustainable way. And like one of the ways that I always think about it is if you look at like free to play mobile games, there are people who still spend thousands of dollars on those games just because they want the rarest item or the rarest character and stuff like that. And striking a balance between that and having an earning model that if someone for them a few hundred dollars is so much money that they could earn from the game, if someone struck a balance between the whales and people who want to earn, maybe it would work. Um, I like we haven't seen it yet in a way that's perfectly sustainable and worked out well. But obviously excited to see what what comes out if someone gets it right. So. Absolutely. And, and PG, let's end off with you on this one. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, tokens are not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's been, you know, the way that, you know, one of the, the big innovations, I guess, for crypto overall, like, you know, you, you launch a product, you raise money for a token. So you don't have to go through all the, the cycles uh, of raising funds as a traditional, you know, tech company. Um, I think, you know, definitely in the last cycle, we pivoted more towards like VC rounds and whatnot, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But when it comes to game, um, if you're selling like your in-game token that supposedly should, you know, rule the entire in-game economy that you have uh, and you sell 20 percent of your total supply to like free investors, <laughs> then, you know, the economics just don't work. Um, so, you know, it, it really depends how you do it. Um, you know, I, I really agree with Parker when he says like a utility token that you know gets distributed to the community um, again you can have investors uh, you definitely you know they need to be super aligned with your interests uh, and your long-term plans otherwise you know you see what happened to axios you know dean was saying you know the token dumps like 99.6 percent because there's vesting and you know tokens are lock and uh, you know investors that got it like a few cents and now the token is like a you know three bucks or whatever they can make like you know, <laughs> a lot of money. So why wouldn't they, right? I mean, it's capitalist at the end of the day. So um, you really have to like build a token with like your your the gamers in mind, right? That's that's the best way, um, in my opinion. So yeah, again, that it's it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, um, another thing that I would add uh, is that tokenomics is very hard. Like it's a totally different ballpark than just building a game. Um, even like big protocols. Uh, you know, and other like, you know, DeFi apps and whatnot, like they really like do a good job in tokenomics. So, um, you know, if you're a game dev out there, definitely like get a lot of extra pair of eyes looking at your uh, your tokenomics because uh, um, you can have the best game, but if you issue a token and the tokenomics suck, then you are not going to go very far, in my opinion. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I want to pose the next one actually right back to you, PG. Uh, so how do you think Algorand could attract some of those more like, you know, AAA will say uh, level studios that, you know, build out games in the, you know, Web 2 world or whatever we want to call it. How do you think Algorand can attract those studios to build out games on Algorand, of course? Um, great question. I mean, first and foremost, uh, tooling, uh, like we have to make it easy uh, for, uh, oh, thanks, Bama. Uh, we got to make it easy uh, for, for devs to like come and build on Algorand. Um, we're actually working on, on you know, a few SDKs to enable that. Uh, we're going to be announcing them pretty soon, so stay tuned. Uh, that Definitely that has to be the first, uh, um, you know, milestone. And that on, on top of that, then there's an education gap <laughs> that we have to fill here. Um, a lot of the, you know, b big gaming studios, but also like indie gaming devs, uh, they're not attracted at all to crypto. Like when I say at all, it's like literally like they, you know, <laughs> they're, they're borderline hating us. Um, and the reason being is because, you know, gaming is just such a, like, a, it's a space where like there's there's a lot of love and a lot of passion. And, you know, oftentimes in crypto, we see kind of the opposite, a lot of speculation and whatnot. Um, so, you know, we, we got to bridge that gap and, and show like, what are the values of, you know, adding crypto primitives uh, um, to, to your game. Um, so those are the things. To be honest, in all fairness, in my opinion, um, I think the big big publishers are gonna be are gonna be waiting a little bit more um, to to drop some of their like big games uh, on the blockchain. I think their you know their approach as for now is to like invest in like smaller gaming st studios building web free games uh, and see where that goes. Uh, they're not gonna get burnt uh, with like you know a web free cod, right? Because uh, that can go wrong in so many <laughs> ways. And last thing I would say also, uh, another thing that we, de the, uh, as an industry, not just Algorand here, definitely Algorand has like a lot of good uh, good stuff in this direction, but um, the user experience uh, needs to be impeccable. Uh, um, you know, different levels, uh, first and foremost, uh, the wallet side of things, which is like supposedly how you manage all these like, you know, decentralized assets. Uh, um, if that experience is not the smoothest, then uh, we are gonna have a lot of troubles. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'll pause there. Um, I guess I'd love to hear, um, everybody else's opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Does anyone else have a take on that? Because, you know, I was just part of the previous, uh, developer panel and there was a similar sentiment echoed with the developers as it kind of seems in the gaming world. Uh, we even had Fergal of tiny men mentioning that in a way it's almost embarrassing sometimes to admit that you work in the blockchain world. So how do we bridge that gap? You know, how do, how does the gaming, uh, industry on blockchain really bridge that gap between uh the the image that it has in in the minds of many people in the web 2 world versus what we hope it to be yeah i mean i watched the previous panel right there when that was being talked about and i really liked their answer where uh the blockchain should be chosen for its technology and that the user experience shouldn't even the user shouldn't even know that they're on the blockchain really it should be um pretty much handled for them and that it should just be chosen for the technology so it, it should be n much less barrier to entry than it is now currently because it is quite difficult for uh, new users to onboard that's one of the struggles we've been having and i think we've got a solution for it but fantastic does anyone else have to anything to add to this discussion i feel like it's an interesting one do you have a take clifford yeah, what I'll say is, you know, the gaming industry uh, without blockchain already works. Um, so right. what the Web3 needs to do is to prove that there is a better model. You know, I'm not even saying that it is a better model. I'm saying it's a model that I personally like better with the owning of the assets. I think, you know, in the future, we're going to see lots of, you know, crazy things like, you know, games using their NFTs in each other's video games and things like that. We're going to see all kinds of collaborations and the actual freedom of what these ASAs can do, you know, once there's a lot of games up and running on Algorand, I think we're going to see a lot of crazy things that is going to be really exciting. Whether that's going to, you know, get a big AAA firm excited, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going to get them excited um, to come and use the blockchain. But until we kind of, you know, all the indie developers, until we show that there is something that is needed and wanted by the general gaming public. I don't think they're going to come, but I think there's tons of runway and tons of, you know, creation that can happen that can lead to that. But I don't think they're just going to, you know, stumble in and start 
building multi-million dollar games on Algorand. I think um, us indie gamers have to do our best and, you know, get things popping off and hopefully they'll, you know, hop on from there. Absolutely. And Aaron and Dean, do you have anything to add to uh, this specific topic? Yeah, so I think I think in terms of like bringing Web2 gamers or whatever you want to call it over to Web3 gaming, I think a lot of times it is just showing them an example of how it can sort of extend or enhance their experience in terms of gaming. And like a great example that I usually bring up is like Magic the Gathering as an example, as like the online card game, right? You spend money on these expensive packs, get random cards in the packs, you can't sell them, you can't trade them, you can't do anything with them. When if it was on blockchain, you would have the ability to buy the card you want, do whatever you wanted with it. If you were done with that deck, you could eventually sell it out. Now, obviously, you're not going to get Wizards of the Coast to come over to blockchain because they would lose money straight away. So I think the way that gaming companies eventually come over to blockchain is where blockchain is doing so well and the gaming public has sort of adopted it in such a way that those AAA studios will lose money if they don't eventually move over to blockchain. So that's why I still think it's quite a while out until we're at that place. And the focus right now should more be on trying to show the Web2 gamer like what Web3 can do. Yeah, and I'll just add on to that, something that got me super excited about doing the card mode, like Alchemon, you know, something that like uh, Ager is doing and things like that is when I got started, I just imagined like, what if um, every single gaming piece, what if every single magic card I had was infinitely in mint condition living on the blockchain? You know, what if when I was collecting things as a teenager, they were all still mint condition 20 years later? Like that's something that gets me right. super excited, not saying that you know, that level of um, success is determined or anything like that. But just the fact that these things will all be in mint condition in, you know, 100 years from now, it's just kind of like something that seems like a no brainer, at least to me. Absolutely. I don't know if you want to take it away from here. If you're, uh, if you're all set over there, David. I do. I do have my audio back. I don't know what I have my video. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, right. th Welcome back. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so there is some other questions. Uh, one of them, I kind of, you know, what sort of limitations right now do you feel like is in the space? Because, you know, I feel like it was Aaron and Dean. I didn't have I didn't have video. I had audio listening, though. I was trying to fix it. Uh, someone was saying, you know, that the Web2 gaming community, like, kind of doesn't, like, they hate crypto, right? They hate this, you know, the next, I guess, iteration of gaming, you could say. Uh, is it because of limitations? Like, why is that? Like, or, or is it just because they see the pump and dump and the, you know, just people trying to scam people for money? Like what's, or, or is it even go deeper than that to like the blockchain and actually building a game on a blockchain and just how much harder it is? I think it just, uh, I think it has a lot to do with the games that have been released on blockchain haven't been fun as a big point because they go and like, oh, this new game, come out, let me try it out. And you see it and you're like, what is, like, this isn't a fun game because the games have been generally made around, oh, how can you earn like an earning mechanic rather than an actual fun mechanic? So I think that's one of the big ones uh, that we would think of. Yeah, totally agree. I feel like there hasn't been a good example set yet. You know, I, I think the, the thing that really needs to happen is a really good game needs to come out, a good example needs to be set. And then I think once that happens, more AAA studios will come, more gamers will come, and eventually adoption will come. But right now they see... Um, no fun games. They see pump and dumps. They see all the problems. They don't see the upside because the upside hasn't really been uh, proven yet. And, and and where do you guys feel like Algorand Gaming is at? And this is you know it might you might have to be critical, kind of like look outside, not just you know. I know everybody probably thinks that they're building the best stuff. Uh, I'm an a I'm an active gamer, right? I've played games my whole life, uh, from Fortnite to Call of Duty to League of Legends to card games. You know, back when I was growing up, you know where are we you know in, in actually making a fun game that people would enjoy and not have to think about oh it's on a blockchain or you know i gotta own this asset and things like that um maybe i can take this one i think we're you know in the spirit of not saying that everything is amazing beautiful and we're the best uh we were late uh, to gaming in a certain extent uh, as we were to like DeFi, as we were to nfts um that's not necessarily a bad thing uh, mainly because you know first of all Algorand is like you know a newer blockchain second of all like we didn't rush the protocol level stuff which in my opinion is imperative like we can talk about like everything and like you know beautiful games or whatnot but you know if they're built on like weak foundations then like why are we here in the first place right 
Um, so like we have that part set now, uh, and now is you know is the app era, um, and you know one of the buckets of these apps is like definitely gaming. Uh, I am very excited about like a bunch of the games, uh, and of course like you know some are here with us, but there are others. Uh, uh, and honestly, like I'm not gonna lie, and like maybe this might sound bad, but you know I'm I'm just one person, and also you know the, the ecosystem is large, and like sometimes like uh, you know. Um, I learn about some games building on Algorand, like, you know, I learned about one that, you know, uh, is building on Algorand last week in the in the Twitter space. Um, I didn't, they were in stealth, they were super quiet, so, um, but, you know, there's a, there's a lot going on. So, again, like, the, the one thing is that games take time um, to, to, to make overall. It's not just, you know, other things in crypto where, you know, you can fork some code, make some tweaks. Uh, and whatnot and, and deployed in like you know a few months uh, games are like a lot of work so um you know that's that's where we are right now again like 2023 is definitely going to be the one the year where we see like a bunch of these games coming out uh, a bunch of people getting uh, getting excited and playing them um another approach we're taking at, at the foundation is to you know there's definitely like the products built uh, on algorand aka games uh, but there are other ways we can interact with the gaming community um through incentives through rewards um and actually if uh, you know i bet all uh, people out there play cod and uh, csgo and other games uh, stay tuned because there might be some some sweet announcement uh, soon on that side um aka winning some algos uh, um if you're good at these games um just just dropping it here is something that we're working on and again it's a it's a way to to to, to see again like uh, um, we, we have to bridge that gap with the gaming community, um, and we got to be creative in doing so. Um, and, uh, you know, there are different ways to do so. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I'll say, I think the biggest, the biggest barrier to get gaming going is the funding of it. You know, to build a game, you have to have developers, you have to have players, um, and you have to fund all that. So unless you're independently wealthy, um, you know, or doing it nights and weekends, that still comes with the issue of paying other people to develop as well. Um, so then your options to raise are to publicly raise, which would be selling tokens or NFTs directly to the public, but people don't like that. People don't like buying things without having, you know, an, an immediate return. I mean, some people are fine with it, but it's, it is a lot of risk to do it that way. And then on the other, the other end of the spectrum is going with VCs who are going to want to see a return. And then you have the issues of people thinking they're going to get, you know, dumped on and stuff like that. So th there isn't any um, easy way to do it. There's no like, oh, you want to build a game? These are the exact steps you take. There's a lot of tough questions that you have to go through. There's a lot of hard work just to get to the point of being like, great, this is how I'm going to pay this person to build this game. You know, you're already... You're already, you know, digging a hole that you have to get yourself out of as soon as, you know, you start building and start promoting and start getting people to invest funds into. So I would say that's the biggest issue. You know, there's a lot to say about, you know, someone who's just building something on nights and weekends, you know, but what is that going to turn into? You know, hopefully something good and something entertaining, but there's just, that's the biggest issue is how do you get from nothing to a game it takes a lot of capital a lot of time and a lot of things that you know a lot of people may not be comfortable with what direction you take on that so that's the biggest barrier to getting a lot of gaming going on outbrand in my opinion yeah and going back to pidgey's point i think algo is poised in a really good position because you know even though we were late we got to see um we got to see examples before us and now we know what to do and what not to do and I think we're still early, so I think there's a lot of good coming down the line. And I think we got a unique perspective on uh, the correct path or maybe a more correct path, at least. Absolutely. And I'd like to actually pose this one back to you, PG, because, uh, you know, we, we spoke about a little bit here about what's to come. And, you know, one of the community questions or, uh, you know, one of the questions that kept coming up from the community uh, was looking for updates, if you could share any at all on the upcoming Drone Racing League game. Uh, there's a lot of excitement around that game. And, uh, you know, I, I think we would all love to hear a little bit more about it. Um, sure. Yeah. So um, the the game is being uh, developed by Playground Labs, which is a dev shop uh, that spun out of Ivemind. Um, and uh, yeah, I there's an alpha out that I played. It's pretty cool. There's definitely you know there's work to be done. Um, the trailer is definitely very exciting. 
Um, but you know, again, to, to match the trailer, there's there's a little bit of work more. Um, I think that's the you know that could be a great vehicle. Also, like you know, I know some people in the community are not you know the, like are not really keen on that DRL partnership. Uh, but you know, and, and some you know to some extent maybe rightfully so. Uh, but I personally think that like you know the, like having a game. Uh, could be the best way to, you know, on, actually onboard and tangibly onboard uh, um, that, you know, that audience, which is, by the way, pretty massive um, on, you know, onto Algorand. Um, so again, st stay tuned. I think that's that's the best I can do in terms of sharing. Um, but again, um, you know, once I, I guess, like, stay tuned on, like, you know, all the all the updates and the news. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty exciting, and I think it's. Uh, the last thing I would say is like that type of community. Um, it's a, it's a pretty particular one because we're not talking about like just gamers or people that like uh, are actually passionate about drones overall. These are people that may, might have drones uh, like physical ones, uh, and the game is like you know that you know the, the casual like uh, uh, way of like still uh, um, being involved with their passion. Um, so I you know that that would be pretty cool. Uh, again, keep you know. Just keep an eye on the DRL page and our page and like, uh, um, you know, updates will come soon. Yeah, there's a lot of coming soon coming from PG over there in the, in the foundation. So I, I'd actually like to pose this question more broadly to everyone else on the panel. Uh, what, are you, what are you guys working on? Uh, anything, any updates that people that you want to share with the people? Any alpha that we can squeeze out of you about each and in, each individual project here? Uh, we'll start off with uh, Fractal Tamers and see what we can get. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I could talk for hours, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to bore everybody. <laughs> um, but we've got we've got mainnet launch coming up on January 30th. So we're finally going mainnet with the monsters. Uh, you can shuffle a monster pack on our website. Um, the mint price will be pegged at 50 USD. So right around 200 algo as of now. Depends on the price of algo. Um, but I think even one of the cooler things that we've done recently is really try to reduce onboarding friction. We want to reach as big of an audience as possible. So we came up with the concept of Frack Wallet, which is um, basically a process you can go through on our website to create an uh, algo wallet that is stored in your local browser encrypted with a user password. So it's really similar to how my algo wallet works. And this allows um, users who don't know what crypto is, Web2 gamers, to not uh, have to worry about creating a wallet through other places. They can just come to our website and do everything. So they can create a wallet, fund it from our website using OnRamper, who we recently partnered with. Uh, so you can fund that wallet with fiat currency. Uh, so hopefully that really helps reduce onboarding friction there. Also, if you do go that route, we will reward you with um, our token it's not like a it's not a monetary value token but it's more like a virtual currency type deal similar to like clash of clans has like the gold you know similar but we will reward you like a percentage of how much you fund your wallet based on that that's one of the big features we've been pushing fantastic uh, how about you clifford anything anything we can squeeze out of you anything to come for alchemon that's really exciting any alpha yeah so we're um our developers are all head down in uh getting the mobile, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, we've also worked out an outline for some, you know, exciting uh, burning stuff where, uh, you know, in the in the um, alchemy branch of Alchemon, where you can uh, burn your, well, we're going to call it vaulting, where you can vault your Alchemon <clears throat> to earn some other cool stuff that'll be useful in game. Uh, so that's something we're excited for. Uh, we've just got, you know, an outline on that and what it's going to look like, and we should be bring some governance votes to our community soon on, you know, some final design ideas on that. Um, and then also we've got um, Project Alchemist that we're building out, which will be our uh, profile picture or our characters that, you know, have owned the Alchemon and the Alchiverse. So those are the things we're all uh, head down on. And uh, we should have some exciting announcements, uh, concrete announcements soon. Fantastic. And how about uh, you, uh, Aaron and Dean? I know you both have your thumbs on the pulse of the Algorand gaming ecosystem. Uh, so what are you seeing out there? What's uh, to be excited for in 2023? Well, um, I don't know if you guys saw, we released a decipher that we're going to be developing a platform called Cooldown. And the whole idea around that is that it's going to be a collective unit of services and tools for blockchain gamers to sort of enhance their experience for playing and discovering new games. 
Um, yeah, so basically, know. like, like just there's a few features that will be in it, but like one or two that we'll have. So there'll be a gamepedia, which is basically like a way that you can filter through all the games at Algorand and find the one that you want to play by game type or platform or anything like that. And then there'll also be a questing system, which is basically like learn to earn, where games can basically put up a quest and people could earn tokens or NFTs by learning about those games. And like, like Aaron said, just the general goal is to help improve the discovery, almost gamify the discovery process of games on Algorand. Um, and then obviously, like just generally, the whole Algorand gaming ecosystem, there's a ton of launches coming up. Obviously, Fractal's coming up, which we're super excited about. And we've been playing testing it for like the last two months um, extensively. Um, and there's a lot of other exciting games like um, Alvatar's Tile Fighters, which we played at the Cypher which is in beta at the moment, super fun game. Like it seems simple, but it is so strategic mm -hmm. um, and sort of fits the whole NFT thing really well. Uh, so I think there's, there's a lot to for look forward to, especially in the next like three, four months. Yeah, it's been cool because since like we started the AGG everything, it, we've been following these games that have been so small and it's like just news about the games coming and it's now in 2023, I think a lot of those games are just gonna like be out there, playable and like, it's gonna be cool to see everything come into play. Yeah, that's really exciting to hear uh, what you guys are building because uh, we actually had Fractal Tamers on the next block uh, yesterday, and I was, you know, really excited to hear that you know they're going to be building a Web two version of Fractal Tamers, um, you know, that people will be able to get on Steam, which is obviously a, a, a platform I use to browse new games that are being created and see if there's anything fun that I may want to play. Uh, so that'll be cool, uh, and that kind of goes with the question of how do you guys plan to reach more of those Web two gamers in marketing, right? So how are you going to you know get you know because yes people may find you know they may get into bitcoin or something and then that leads them down the rabbit hole of of, of altcoins and then actually maybe you know diving into a chain but that's a really big long shot that they're going to land on your game so how do you guys plan to actually market your games to people uh that would actually want to play them yeah i mean you kind of touched on it there a little bit we definitely we are hoping to we gotta we still need to figure out the logistics so uh, it's not a guarantee, but it is definitely um, something we would like to do. We'd like to release a Web 2 version of the game, so that way uh, someone could stumble upon it on Steam and they will, could just play that way. Um, obviously, the, the NFT portion would be out of it um, temporarily. They would be able to transfer um, like items to, to a, a new account if they created one. So that would be good. That's a good way to sort of ease them into the blockchain experience a little bit. Um, and then again, going back to the frack wallet thing, we, we really want to be a one stop shop website for um, anything to do with fractal monsters. So if someone comes to the website, they don't need to go to Rand Gallery or Algo X NFT to list their monsters, to buy monsters, to buy a tamer, you know, whatever. They can do it all from our website, which I think is really important for um, getting web two gamers because the, the more clicks you have to make the harder it gets and the more complicated the process becomes the less retention rate you have so we really wanted to just drop as many barriers as possible and so one of the best ways we thought to do that was to just be a one one size fits all website do everything yeah, and Clifford, you might have, you know, a little bit more um, something or at least a different perspective since, you know, Alchemon has been live. Uh, you know, how has the bear market affected that for the last, you know, year? Uh, how, you know, have you how have you seen, you know, the user number base grow, uh, you know, and, and where are you seeing, I guess, the best growth? Yeah, I mean, um, definitely in the, you know, in the bear market, not only prices are down, but, you know, engagement and stuff like that as well. But, um, you know, we definitely know that making our game more accessible is the next big step so that's why we're you know focusing everything on mobile in the game um you know it's very interesting because you know these numbers are about a month old but in december all wallets that bought their first nft 50 percent of them were alchemon nfts so of all people onboarded into the nft space on algorand their first nft was an alchemon so we definitely intend to, you know, keep that trend of getting people that already exist on Algorand into NFTs, onboarding people, not just from blockchain into NFTs in gaming. Like we're very proud of that and we intend to do that. Uh, but, you know, like others have mentioned, the next step is getting people that don't know about Algorand 
into, you know, Algorand and into gaming and into NFTs. So, you know, we have, uh, you know, ideas like we want to basically onboard people to Web3 with a way to, you know, our, the story mode of the game will be kind of taking them through what Web3 is, what a wallet is and all that stuff. And, you know, onboard people with just a way that, you know, it's just a game. And then, you know, as they progress through the story mode of the game, they learn about Web3, they learn about Algorand and they, you know, have a wallet and they have the NFTs in their wallet and then they take it over once they're ready to. So no clue when that'll be ready. We haven't really started any development on it, but that's, you know, our grand scheme to get people on board on the Algorand. Thanks. Um, and, and this is kind of another question, you know, because I think, you know, get your, you know, I know most URLs are browser based right now. And obviously, I know you guys are moving to be uh, mobile. Um, you know, how far away are we from, you know, games being on blockchain that are on like, you know, Xbox, PlayStation, you know, things where people are actually like, you know, searching and, and seeing it in stores and stuff like that. And I know that may be, you know, maybe too big a question for anyone to, you know, really answer. Um, but it just seems like for it to really take off, it's going to have to be on a, you know, with something that a large audience has access to. Yeah, that's a, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, that's difficult because once you get into other stores, you get in your, you know, playing by their rules, you know, just like Apple came out with just the worst rules about, you know, blockchain. Um, and that's, you know, that's a huge issue. So anytime you're going to someone else's stores, you have to agree to do what they're saying. And then you're building workarounds and then you're, you know, doing all these other things. So I think, you know, while it's not exciting, I think what is going to have to happen is something, you know, something like Algo Gaming Guild is going to have to become a platform that is getting these games out to people. You know, we will we will need new third parties that are onboarding people onto games. It's not just going to be each individual game that's only onboarding their own people. We need new um, providers of where to find, you know, entertainment that isn't in these big corporations that are already seeing their money and already, you know, they're not worried about their profit margins. They don't have to, you know, go and onboard Web3 people for us and things like that. So <clears throat> I think we do need to see, you know, new, not gatekeepers, but new uh, people that can bring on Web Web3 players. Yeah, you summed it up. That's exactly what I was going to say. So yeah, it was a great <laughs> answer. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. So uh, this next question is going to be for Algo Gaming Guild, but I'm going to merge a couple questions here because they're, they're relatively similar and we did sort of touch on it earlier. Uh, but the community wants to know what are some of the projects that you're excited about in the coming future and, and maybe, uh, you know, what projects out there need a little bit more attention or deserve a little bit more attention? I know you mentioned avatars when we've got, of course, yeah. got Fractal Tamers and Alchemon here. But, the, you know, as you mentioned, there's a whole slew of great games out there that are about to be launching. So curious to get your take. So I can talk a little bit about like I'm a huge Call of Duty fan and just generally a fan of shooter games. Uh, so we have Shawsha's going to release a game called Slaughter, which is a first person shooter game. And then we also have Gunny, which was a little bit stealth for a while and recently popped up and they I've actually tried out their game. It's like a, almost like a battle royale shooter game. Um, and I'm most excited for those just because it goes in line with what I play a lot and then you know, yeah, I'm more of the card gamer, so I'm pretty excited for Ego. We actually got to try it out at Disciple, which was pretty cool, and I'm still <sighs> defeated by him, so I need to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was a really good game. I actually got to play that as well at Decipher, and, and I quite enjoyed it because I, I've played a lot of Hearthstone, which is yeah. really similar in, in that sense. And uh, yeah, I thought that game was fantastic, actually. Yeah. And I think just generally talking about like games that need more, more attention, um, I think a lot of the ecosystem generally needs more attention because I think like the community at the moment is quite small when it comes to gaming. And I think like once we get a lot of these fun games out, that'll build up. Um, I have to do a shout out to like the Discord games on Algorand. It might be like really simple, but like some of them are incredible, like the thirst over horse racing, which I know they're on the next panel after this. Uh, like some of the stuff that's being done in those games is just crazy and and so much fun. Um, but I but like if I had to say Gunny, like I just said as well, deserves a lot of attention um, just because they're still like relatively unknown in, in the ecosystem. So if I can add a couple of ones, well, there's a one that's just like hilarious to me and I just love like it's just so much fun. Uh, which is which is ghetto pigeons? Uh, it just it just 
hilarious to me. I don't know they're doing their mutant drop right now, and uh, you know the the, the trailers are uh, you know they're they're just they look so fun, and it's more like a GTA where you know you're a pigeon <laughs> in GTA, <laughs> so it's it's hilarious to me. Um, that uh, that's another good one. Um, Battle Bears, which is actually the game I, I came to learn about last week, uh, is building on Algorand. They actually got second place at the A-Game uh, Hackathon that we did a while back. Um, and speaking of the A-Game Hackathon, another cool game in production is uh, uh, Natural Awakens. Uh, um, and I actually got to play the Alpha, and it looks pretty cool. Um, so shout out to that team. Uh, and there's another one that probably most of you guys don't know about because they've been in style for a little bit. Uh, but it's called Ever Forest. Uh, it's something that I'm personally pretty bullish about. Um, it's going to be a mobile. Their team is stellar. Um, I'll make sure they come to the, our next Twitter space uh, uh, that we'll do in February, so you get the community can get to know them better. Um, but that's that's like a um, how do you say like plan? I don't want to say plan to earn, plant and earn. Pretty much like uh, uh, you play the game and you have to like uh, foster a forest uh, and attract some animals. Uh, and as you progress in the game, uh, they plant trees. So your rewards can be redeemed as like trees that get planted. So it's pretty cool. It's going to be mobile. So, you know, that can can tap into like that type of audience. Uh, and another thing that I like about that game is like it can be for the entire family. Um, so like it can be played, you know, from kids to uh, to grandma. So, um, yeah, just like a glimpse of, of all of that. And, uh, yeah, that gets me very excited. Uh, I have a question for, uh, right back at you a little bit. Uh, and this is just from, a you know, wondering, you know, there's so many games that are already out there that are very successful. I mean, I know a lot of people, uh, in Algorand specifically got excited with when the FIFA partnership was coming through and, you know, me included, uh, you know, start to brainstorm ways in which, you know, something like ultimate team could be integrated onto a blockchain. Um, right. and is there any, like, uh, vertical of the Algorand Foundation, or even in really anywhere in crypto, that's trying to reach out to these bigger, you know, well-known gaming brands, you know, Fortnite, Call of Duty, and actually convince them on how their business or how their game could be better uh, positioned on blockchain. Well, I was very excited about FIFA as well. Um, I grew up playing FIFA more than any other video game, so yeah, that was uh, pretty exciting to me. And then you know, the excitement, I guess, like faded out, but. Um, yeah, so the thing with big publishers, uh, um, during the bull market, it was just like, it was a trap, honestly, um, because of all the money that was going around. And these people, you know, they know the type of leverage they have. Um, so the price point is just obscene. Um, just like, just does not make any sense. Um, now they're in a bear market. Uh, um, and I can tell you, know, I'm not going to disclose, but I can tell you some of these like big players, not the gaming publishers, but like other big, big entities in the gaming space. Um, that we're currently working on. So they put things on pause for like, oh, this FTX thing just happened. Uh, we're going to have to push this back for like a month or two. And it's frustrating. <laughs> um, that's a bad, you know, it's it's an image damage that we took as, as a whole industry. Um, to be completely honest, uh, um, I especially like I'm talking about like my focus at the foundation and whatnot. Uh, again, since I'm just like one person at the end of the day, I'd rather like make sure that we grow a strong and cohesive ecosystem uh, from the ground up, uh, um, you know, making sure we are supporting all the great uh, builders and founders that we have uh, that have been around, you know, in good times, in hard times, uh, um, rather than go try to pursue these big partnerships. This big partnership might be worth it, uh, not, not right now, in my opinion, uh, um, both, again, for, you know, money-wise, uh, uh, readiness wise, uh, uh, both as Algorand as an as an industry overall. Uh, um, I don't know, maybe this is something that like, you know, some people in the community could say, no, why you should and whatever. Um, I think we need to be hyper focused for 2023. Uh, being spread to thin is not is not going to pay out that much. So um, on, on our side, we're, we're just focusing on like, again, making sure that the, the, the real builders are doing uh, are doing okay, are supported, and they can succeed uh, um, on their product. Yeah, thanks for answering.
and mm -hmm. and Aaron and Dean, I'm, I'm super excited for everything I've, so far I've heard that you guys are building. And uh, the one question I would have is, uh, when are we going to have like a yearly festival for Algorand Gaming? Because it was, a, I will say this, like, I know when we were at Decipher, uh, you know, we were a little busy. I won't, I was sick the first uh, whole day of it, but even the second day we were doing interviews and I didn't get to play as many of the games. But uh, I definitely think as, as 2023, it may be the first inaugural year that we set up a big uh, Algorand gaming type conference because that could be a really cool way to you know to get excitement and bring new people in, uh, especially if you're in you know some of these big cities you know like New York, California, and stuff like yeah. that. So maybe maybe that's something we could plan out for 2023. Yeah, so we we actually are going to be doing a virtual sort of gaming okay. convention, which will more be like a game showcase on what's on Algorand. It'll probably be in May. We're just trying to settle on a date at the moment where it'll be like run on like YouTube. We'll bring up different people to showcase the games, answer community questions. We'll do panels as well. And then we intend on having like different like Discord rooms in our Discord where you can come and chat to the dev and ask any specific questions. Um, so that'll be virtual, the first one. And then depending on how that goes and depending on how the general community builds up, like we eventually want to move it to like a physical convention, even if it's on the smaller side uh, to start off, so. Like an nice. E3, but vulgar. Yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Awesome, so we are nearing the, or actually we're just past the top of the hour here. Awesome. So I just wanna, I just wanna say, you know, one or ask one last question. It's gonna be for just about everybody here. Uh, so moving forward into 2023, uh, say there's somebody that has like an idea in their head, they wanna build a game, but they, they really don't know uh, where to start. What would you say to somebody that's looking to begin building, uh, you know, some sort of game in the, whether it's the Algorand ecosystem or just blockchain more generally, what would you give, uh, what type of advice would you give to somebody trying to develop a new game? I see Clifford smile and I know exactly what's going through his head. <laughs> Let's start um, off with Clifford and then make our rounds then. Don't do it. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, like, like I mentioned before, um, definitely you need to figure out how to get from point A to point B. Um, and you should really have that all worked out, how you're going to fund, who's going to be your developers, uh, what it's going to cost. You know, I, I think it it really just needs a good business plan and you need to really figure out all of the steps you're going to take from point A to point B, including funding, whether that is public funded or VC funding. Um, basically how you're going to get to what we call um, a minimum viable product, an MVP. Um, just totally work that out um, and then go for it. Shoot for the moon. Fantastic advice. How about you, Parker? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think that's great advice. Um, I come from a I, I'm a mainly a developer, so in in my eyes, I just you put your head down and you just start trying. You just start building. Um, uh, you, I didn't come up with the entire plan. James, our our main game dev, he did most of the administrative stuff. But from my perspective, we just we built games together before, and so we just did it again and this time we we really 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 put a lot more effort and time and just dedicated ourselves to the project and that that really paid off so it really does take that dedication fantastic and how about you aaron and dean any any advice to give to a new developer yeah. you want to answer this since you're dead <laughs> yeah well just to echo what like parker and clifford both said it's like if you have an idea don't rush into it like take your time build something good build something fun that people are going to want to play but it's yeah just start and then honestly, if you're a new dev who wants to develop a game on Algorand, like reach out to us yeah, because the Algorand community is super welcoming as long as like you're building a legit game and we're around to support. We pretty much support every single game that's out there, whether they're a small Discord game, a game linked to an NFT project or like a game being built on browser, mobile, anything. So reach out to us and we can like, get you connected in the community and help out. Fantastic. And you want the last word, PG? Um, yeah, I mean, all the above, I guess, uh, additionally, um, you know, if you want to, if you want to get into the Algorand ecosystem as an early stage project, uh, we have uh, a few accelerators that could definitely be a good, you know, good first step for you. Um, you know, if you're a little later in the, in, in your roadmap, uh, um, you know, we do do investment, uh, although, you know, it's a, it's a bear market nevertheless. Um, and then like uh, go on the developer portal for everything like tech related, um, hop into the discord, uh, the official algorithm discord, uh, 
uh, hop into the um, the Argon Gaming Guild Discord, uh, reach out to the people. Uh, uh, it's a pretty open community, so people will be more than happy to help you. Um, and yeah, and then just again keep grinding. I think that's that's of course it goes without saying. Beautiful, beautiful answers. And it does look like the people in the chat are hoping people uh, build out a bicycle race uh, game. So, so hopefully we get one of those yeah. happening. I don't know. I don't know if y'all picked up your free climate ride bike. It's a bike to earn. So I've been doing that on the beach all day. It's just been, I mean, you know, getting that dad beach bod ready. So, uh, you know, love right. Stacy uh, and that partnership, man. It was great. There you go. <laughs> and, and honestly, kudos to her. She actually, she was really funny earlier. So yeah. Kudos to that conversation. And I really appreciate everyone that joined this stream today. Uh, Parker, Cliff. Clifford, Aaron, Dean, PG. Uh, it's been fantastic. And everyone else at home, stay tuned for the next panel. See you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.